Just for example, if there are some people talk about warning about the enemy, and obviously Paul Revere comes to mind. He was a great silversmith. <laughs> and he did alert the countryside, but he was one of now, as they find out, he and his fellow riders, then it was like a chain. They, you know, he didn't do it all by himself. If you want to look at a real heroic midnight ride, I would mention Captain John Jewett Jr. of Virginia. His all night ride in June of 1781 to warn Governor Thomas Jefferson that Bannister Talton and his legionnaires were headed to Charlottesville to capture him and members of the assembly is not only a midnight ride, it was through enemy territory and had he been detained by Tarleton's legionnaires as Revere was detained by the British, there's no question of what Tarleton and his men would have done to somebody they called rebels. They wouldn't let him go, go back home. Or what would they have done had they called Thomas Jefferson? And it was still a very narrow escape. And then for my friends from South Carolina, <clears throat> excuse me, there is Jane Black Thomas, and I'm not bringing Mrs. Thomas in because she is a woman, I'm not being politically correct. Um, she was over 60 years of age. Now, those of us over 60 don't think that's old today. <laughs> but believe me, in 1780, over 60 was, she was more than a senior citizen. She was tending to her wounded husband who was a prisoner of war, he'd been commander of the Spartan Regiment, at 96, a British strong point. She overheard the wives of some English officers talking about mounting an ambush raid on what was left of the Spartan regiment in Spartan district there along the North Carolina line. She stole a horse, rode 60 miles across the state to warn the Spartan regiment, which then ambushed the British at the first battle of Cedar Springs. Now, again, you say, well, they wouldn't have harmed a woman. Ladies and gentlemen, what the English Army of Occupation was doing in South Carolina in 1780 and 81. Gender or age made no difference as to how they treated you because you were, as Cornwallis called, uh, a rebel. But even if you don't want to mention her with her heroic ride as for that part, most textbooks now want to include examples of what women did in the revolution. And I will, I can't remember the exactly, but I'd say at least 80 to 90 percent, Abigail Adams gets a mention. Okay, I think what Ms. Thomas did is pretty nice. And then, what about, the, what about the mother of our seventh president? Elizabeth Hutchinson Jackson. Her husband had already died, but after the British occupation and those horrible POW ships had been opened in Charleston Harbor, she volunteered to go to Charleston and nurse ill Americans on board those war hulks. She caught what they call ship fever, died and was buried in an unmarked grave. A sacrifice for the American cause. I think that's something, and it's not unknown, but it could have been uh, included.